Welcome back. Well, asthma affects uh, over 350 million people worldwide, and that's just one type of allergy, right? It's World Allergy Week, and this year's focus is the connection between asthma and allergic airway diseases. To discuss this now, I'm joined, well, rather, we are joined by allergy specialist Professor Claudia Gray. A very good morning to you, uh, Professor, and thank you so much for joining us. I, I personally don't want to ask this question. Why are we focusing on asthma when there are so many other allergies? I mean, Faith, for example, off-air was saying that at one point she was allergic to cheese. I really was. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very sad happening, Faith. I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, the World Allergy Organization every year has World Allergy Week, and every year they focus on a different topic. And this year the focus is on asthma and the connection with an allergic airway disease. And Faith, I will make sure that next year they talk about cheese allergies. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably not. When you're talking about um, also asthma, because a, a lot of it is around how actually one becomes asthmatic. Are you born with it? Is it inherent? Um, are you more susceptible to it because of the air pollution as well as the environment that, we, that we're mm. in and we find ourselves in? Is it developed over time? And is it an allergy that can be actually avoided? Yeah, Faith, that's an excellent question. Um, and you've hit the nail on the head. There are several factors that build up to a person becoming allergic. And of course, an allergy is a reaction to something that really should be harmless. So when we talk about an, an allergy to house dust mite, most of us can breathe it in and are just fine. But if you're allergic, you breathe in house dust mite and you get itching, sneezing, running, congestion, and maybe even a wheezy chest. But it is a process. Certainly genetic do play a big role, but that's not everything. So on top of genetics, we have environmental factors, and that, those are called our epigenetic factors. Um, so the environment you live in, the timing of exposure to certain things, exposure to pollution, as you say. So all of these are co-factors in the development of allergies. And certainly we find in little children, you're not born with asthma, no. But if you have another allergic disease, like eczema, for example, it makes your chances of developing asthma that much higher. Professor, how bad can it get? How bad can um, asthma get? We have 350 million people around the world affected by it. So a lot of, um, you know, things that affect health affections are fatal. Some of them are fatal. A lot of them are fatal. Where does asthma sit? Yeah, so you bring up two good points. The first is the, how common asthma is. And in a country such as South Africa, probably 10 to 20% of the population suffers from some kind of an allergic uh, asthma and even more from allergic rhinitis, so from nasal allergies. Um, so this is incredibly common. It's the most common co uh, chronic disease in, in the human being, in fact, allergic airway diseases. The vast majority will be mild to moderate and extremely well-controlled or well-controllable. And, of course, you always get your tiny percentage of patients which have the worst end of the spectrum. But the important thing about asthma and allergic diseases is that they can be well-controlled. So given the correct medication regime, which usually requires a daily controller of sorts, you can control your asthma incredibly well. Yeah. So we normally find where there are tragic cases, and sadly, South Africa sits top of the ranks for world in the world for asthma deaths. These can mostly be avoided by good education, good treatment, good prophylactic or preventative treatment. Yeah. You know, uh, Prof, as you're speaking about how you can treat it, um, we simply mm. want to cast uh, an eye onto those individuals that live in the more disadvantaged communities where health care is a privilege, not even quality health care, just health care in general is a privilege. So one wonders how many people and how many South Africans are going about their daily lives undiagnosed with these kinds of problems every single day, not understanding exactly what's happening to their bodies and not being able to treat it as it were. Just how, um, how critical is that in the South African context when we consider that even the economic gaps that still exist? I think it's critical, Faith, but I also, on the other hand, want to add that, you know, your basic asthma treatment, your basic allergic rhinitis treatment is available at every single clinic in South Africa. So perhaps the first step is education. So educating people about the signs and symptoms, itchy, swollen, congested airways, a tight chest. 
so that they realize this is a potential problem and if untreated can potentially lead to devastating consequences. So our availability of medications is there. Yes, sometimes the access to clinics is hard, but by educating our patients, we can hopefully get them to reach the clinics and the doctors at the right time. The next factor that plays a big role is actually the fear of medication. So people often say, oh, but the asthma pump is a steroid. So I said, yeah, and what's the problem? It goes to your chest. It works in your chest. It really doesn't get into the rest of your body in any meaningful way. So the fear that taking a medication every day weakens your chest or is bad for you, that's a huge factor in medicine compliance and patient compliance. So hopefully we can break down that fear as well. Asthma treatment is safe taken in the right way at the right doses and incredibly effective. Prof, what are we hoping to achieve on World Allergy Week? So this year, well, so in general, World Allergy Week is an awareness week that, first of all, I think supports our patients with allergies and secondly aims to spread good, solid, evidence-based information because misinformation is a big problem, especially in this age where we have direct access to Dr. Google uh, all the time. So that's the aim of World Allergy Week, and it has a different theme every year. This year, it's a very interesting theme. It's the concept of the united airway. So it's the connection between upper respiratory allergies, such as hay fever, um, allergic rhinitis, and lower respiratory allergies or allergic conditions such as asthma. And this is a very interesting connection because we tend to see our body as all sorts of completely separate parts. This is what the ENT doctor deals with. This is what the chest doctor deals with. But actually, it is one airway. And I always say to my patients, where does your chest start? And they say, here. I say, ah, ah, it starts here. So you have to treat the nose well yeah. in order to get optimal chest control. And that's the concept of the united airway. So breathing right requires treatment of the entire airway. And that's the aim of World Allergy Week this year. Wow, Prof, as you said, where does uh, your chest start? No, it does not start here. It actually starts in your nose. Learning something new every single yeah. day. Thank you very much for your uh, insights uh, this morning, yeah. obviously, for sharing with us in terms of just allergies. Allergy specialist there, Professor uh, Claudia uh, Gray, just giving us the latest with that. Where does your chest start? It doesn't start here. Ah, because I would have pointed at that. It doesn't start here. It actually starts in your nose. I probably would have been, like, somewhere around my neck. Your chest? Yeah, like, like where, where? Isn't it? You know what? Your chest starts in your nose. That's what. Oh, that's by, the, by, the, by, the, by the way, guys, she did biology. She, no. she, she should know this. I didn't do biology, so no. now my chest starts here. No, I did accounting. Um, to this 